Today we've brought to you someone who knows better when it comes to how this sector works, especially under the present economic realities in the country. So we want to take a look at the prospects and challenges faced by the poultry operators in the country today. Uh, it's our pleasure to have in our midst today. Uh, there is now the, the National Publicity Secretary of uh, Poultry Association of Nigeria. All right, Godwin Egbebe. I hope I got that right. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so nice to have you on the show. You're welcome onto the program. Thank you very much. Oh, I was sharing with you my new discovery uh, yeah. where I bought a locally, you know, grown, ra chicken. grown chicken from someone who said, look, I just wanted to diversify and do this. He told me his stories as to how, it, how challenging it is for him to raise about 5,000 birds now. That's so a tell, lot. That's a lot. So, yeah. so tell me, what is it like to really be a poultry farmer today? Wow. Well, um, I will not deceive you. Anybody that says they want to invest in the poultry industry right now as we speak, I will not advise a person to go into the business. Why? Yes, because a lot of people that have been there, many of them are fizzing out of the business because of numerous challenges that we have been facing even right from COVID era. You want to, let's just dive straight into it. Uh, what are those things? Because I know that the prices of chicken, especially frozen foods, have gone so high. And then during the uh, Yuletide period, we, we realized that even prices of chicken that people loved to eat uh, <laughs> were not anything to, to, to come close to. So what are the major challenges you're faced with today? Well, like... Um Fella used to say the same old story. No water, no light, no road, no electricity. But outside that, there are other numerous challenges that uh, the farmers are going through as we speak. You looked at the Naira redesign. That was a big blow to the farmers. In what ways? Because when we produce, we take the, the produce to the market, no money to buy. Transfers, we are not going. No cash. So sometimes you go to the bank. That's why you see people were so frustrated that some of them even went naked in the bank, if you, if you recall. You go to the bank, you have so much money in the bank, and they will tell you that they can only give you 3000 And as at that time, we were selling eggs for, we were forced to sell eggs at um, maybe one eight, one nine. Some were even selling at... at yes, yeah, some were even selling at ridiculous prices because at the time... We were burying the eggs because they were getting bad. And some people even come and say that, why are we burying the eggs? We should, have, we should have given them out to people. We can't give eggs that are bad to people. Mm. We don't do that. Even to animals, we don't do it. That's why we bury them. Because the best thing for us to have done is to give it to animals, to recycle it to the animals, to feed. But we cannot do that. Nobody keeps his or her produce to, to be bad. No. So, let, let me take up on that before. My colleague in Portaco would like to ask you a question. Yeah. And that takes us to uh, the, the, the level of technology that poultry operators in the country are embracing or are able to gain access to. Uh, and I know that in other parts of the world, you can keep your eggs for as long as you can because yeah. you have the facilities too. Would you consider this to be one of the challenges you're faced with? And are there ways to see you and your buddy and other people stakeholders, so to speak, are uh, keen into such? Yes. Um, for us to have that, we are talking about the egg powder machine. Okay. That can turn the egg into powder, and that will have a long, longer life shelf. Having a longer life shelf, that means people can use it for whatever they want to use it for. It's still going to come out the same way, apart from... I mean, you cannot skin. now cook it and have the white and the, the yellow abdomen and things like that. But you can still use it for every other thing and still give you the same result. How long can you take, keep uh, an egg for, let's say, in a natural habitat or an enhanced environment under this uh, present operations level that you are really... The eggs can stay for mo one month under room temperature without any problem. And in the fridge? In the fridge, yes. can stay for more than one month. Okay. without being degenerated. All right. Ben, I'm sure you have a lot of questions for our guests today. 
Thank you so much, so much. Welcome, welcome to the show, Gordon and Gabriel, once more. But I have a very simple question, first of all. And when you talk about poultry farming, some people think it's just all about chickens. Can you please explain, when you talk about uh, birds, uh, how many birds or what are the kinds of birds that could be found in poultry farming? Okay, good morning. Um, <clears throat> we have a lot of um, varieties of birds. We have uh, the layers, the ones that lay the egg. Then we also have the ones that we use as a table meat. Uh, you can use the cockerel, which is the male chicken. You can also have the broilers, which has a faster growth rate. Within uh, 36, 40 days, you have 2 kg plus. So that one you can use for table meat. You also have turkeys. Even the guinea fowls, the duck, all those are part of uh, poultry. But in this side of the world, they don't, we don't do most of uh, duck and uh, maybe guinea fowl like that. So those ones are mainly in the wide. So we have a lot in the poultry industry. So what are the difficulties you people face trying to rear other birds like the ducks, the turkeys, and the guinea fowls, and, and the rest of them? Why is it only chicken that is predominant in this place? What are, what are the challenges you face in raising such other birds? Well, we are still struggling with the one that we know how to do best. Because um, when you look at it, the major challenge that we are having is... Uh, the feeding, the grains. You talk about the maize and the soya. Those are the two major components in producing the feed. Uh, like in the past, uh, the government will always intervene in terms of uh, giving us uh, grains from the grain reserve. And, um, you know, the last one that we got from CBN and, um, and the Commodity Exchange I think they gave us 20, 20,000 metric tons each. But as at the time that they gave us that uh, uh, maize, I think CBN gave us for 230, and the commodity exchange gave us for 225. As at that time, th this is ex logistic in terms of transport and every other thing. So as at that time, we, were, we farmers were getting the maize in Lagos for 250,000 per metric ton. But just oppose it with the one that CBN is giving us and the commodity exchange they were giving us, it will get to, to us at uh, maybe 255, 260. And we now said, no, we cannot take this. Because even at that 250 that they give us, sometimes we get it from these suppliers at a leverage of one month, monitorium before we start paying. But this one, we are going to pay CBN, we are going to pay commodity exchange at 225, 230 before we now say we are looking for transport and all those stuff to get it to our farms, we now said, no, that will be too much. That is no longer a kind of uh, support or, or intervention. It's like you are selling this thing at uh, the commercial rate, even more than the commercial rate. So we had to negotiate with them. But all of a sudden, they just uh, stopped the, the, what was it called? They canceled the, the, the order that they gave to us. So, as we speak, we don't have that window because we don't know whether they are selling it. So, which is, that is why we need this current president, President uh, Tirubu, to look into it. Because there are a lot of problems that we are facing in terms of maybe the government can do, they have good policies, but implementation, because our people are so gullible, even in the association where I belong. You see that even if they say they give allocation to, like, my association, you might not even see the allocation paper. Even me as a publicity secretary, I don't even have, I mean, insight to what they are giving, which is wrong. So all these are some of the things that needed to be corrected so that Nigerians can move forward. So that would suggest to a lot of people that you, uh, the people, the, the, the stakeholders, that are supposed to be beneficiaries of such government interventions are not getting as much as you should? Is that what you're trying to say? Yes, that's what I'm trying to say because when you, give, when you say you are giving somebody, you are, you are giving an intervention, 
it has to be lower than what the rate at which they are getting it at the open market. Mm -hmm. That is what they call intervention. Because sometimes I don't know whether they don't understand English. When you say you are intervening, that means you want to elaborate, bring down the suffering of whatever challenges that they are going through. So when you say you are intervening and that intervention is more than the open market, it is no longer an intervention. So those are some of the things we think that this current government should look into because there are a lot of corruption in all these things, a lot of problems. Uh, and I want to imagine that the authorities are really watching now and from now henceforth we try to put it in the faces because you are aware of how much food uh, insecurity pervades the world yeah. and now it's very peculiar to Nigeria because according to reports we import a whole lot of what we eat yes. aside the poultry uh, products uh, so to speak. Now Aside government intervention, I want to imagine when I want to start a business, most times I must have a business plan. I must have how things to do to bring about uh, my capital and uh, weigh my, uh, my you know, pros and cons to be yes. able to maximize profits. And not just that, ensure that I meet the demands of those that will be my customers. Uh, would you say <coughs> that the poultry farmers and every stakeholder now is able to meet the local demand, that's number one question. The number two question, uh, are people still buying? <laughs> are people still buying? That's a big question. Because even as we speak, we are not even producing up to capacity as we speak for Nigerians to have the normal protein requirement that they need. So that is why I want to even call on the government. Because now, you see, the former uh, government, there are people that were saying that that is the government of integrity. But this same government, the same party has come and said that the, the lease that they use in sharing those uh, money is, is faulty. It is no longer integrity. There's no integrity in it. So they are now looking at getting another lease. Are we not sure that that lease also will be a lease of integrity? Because even the local government will come now. Because we are looking, we have three chairs of government. We have the federal, the state, and the local government. This fe this, the federal government did it, and they said this, the list is not uh, genuine. Now the state said they want to take it over. Tomorrow, the local government will say the state owned is not also genuine. So I want to suggest, I want to use this medium to suggest to the federal government, if they give farmers those money and say, employ these indigent people, like my farm, I can employ up to 10 people if I have the money. Hmm. In addition to what I have. How many do you have now, if you don't mind? I have about six workers okay. working with me because I, I have downsized my workers. Why? Yes, I have to downsize because I'm no longer making profit. This business is no longer profitable. My workers were asking me because every time like this in July, June, July, we take birds for Christmas and the New Year. But they were asking me, oh, God, won't you take birds for this year? I said, I'm not taking because I've calculated everything. If I feed my best to, to that ulitide period, that means I'll be selling one chicken for between 8,000 to 10,000. Who is going to afford it? We what is the, what we, is the we, minimum we, we, wage? We, we bought it about that range last year. You bought it last oh, no, year, but how many yes. families were able to afford it? That's what we are looking at. Okay, now, I've always wanted to ask this question, and I have the opportunity now. Yes. Most times we look for what government can do what we can do when we get facilities from banks and all of that. Are yeah. poultry farmers considering thinking outside the box, looking within what we have as a people, peculiar to our natural habitats, to really help the poultry work better? Are there any uh, possibilities in that? We have, as farmers, as poultry farmers, we have tried a lot. We have, inter we have um, met with uh, the, uh, the grain farmers, that means trying to do a kind of collaboration with them. But the bandits will not allow them to go to farm. Okay. They don't allow them to go to farm. And we as farmers, we don't have all the wherewithal to go and say, okay, we want to go and be fighting bandits. That's the job of the government. Mm. So they don't go to farm. And if they don't go to farm, sometimes they pay ransom before they go to their farms to farm. And when they want to invest, they also pay ransom. So all this money that they pay, will now be applied back to the, to the produce that they have uh, produced and they sell back to us at a higher cost. This so is, this it's is a big problem. 
the picture you have is very gloomy to a lot of people. <laughs> ben, over to you. I want to imagine you have other questions as well. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Gordon Agbegba, so far. Let's look at health challenges of these poultry birds. How, what do you go through getting veterinary services? Is it cheap? Is it available? We have a lot of veterinarians that are, that are not even, they are no longer practicing uh, the job. Some of them are in the banks. Many are doing some other things like uh, real, real estate and the likes. Because I, I will not deceive you, this, this business is no longer profitable. Many people are closing shops. So if, 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 the, if the business is shrinking, that means those that practice or those that uh, are into uh, this business as a calling, they, they will also face out. So they, they do other things. So that's just the problem. It's not as if um, we don't have people that can manage the industry. We have a lot. We have a lot of professional veterinary doctors, health um, workers and the rights that can really make sure that we're able to produce. But the business is shrinking, seriously. Now, that brings me to this question right now. As a matter of diversification in this particular sector, what must be done by the government, stakeholders, and you, the farmers, what must be done in order to bring back this business and then to see how the economy can diversify, how this particular poultry business can add to growing our economy? Yes, what must be done? Um, there are a lot to be done. We are talking about power because you cannot do anything, any good business without power. So if the government cannot provide power, and we are generating our own power, they should look into the cost of diesel and fuel. I know how much I spend. I've even packed my diesel generator, and um, I'm even thinking of going into gas, using gas. And I was just saying the other day that now that people are trying to go into gas, they're having the carburetor to change from fuel to gas. I said, I don't know what we have done to this government, to the Nigerian government. They will increase gas, and as we speak, my wife went to buy gas uh, just three days ago. The price has changed. It has increased. So we are begging the government to allow us to breathe, according to our president. <laughs> Let us breathe, please. Because many people are suffering. So one way they can, the government can really help the poultry industry, you go through associations. We have associations. When you look at other climbs, I was in the Kansas State in the U.S. 2018. When we were there, that was during Trump uh, era. Yeah. We were in the conference when they announced that the government has given them, was it um, $100 million to support the soya industry? To support. It's a grant. It's not a loan. But this one, government will say that they are alleviating, they are, they are alleviating, they are giving maize for intervention. And we are paying more than the market price. That is not, there is no longer intervention. It is business. And I want to believe that that is not the original plan of the government. Maybe the government will say, just like the president has declared a state of emergency in agriculture. What about the, 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 implement, in the implementers, those that are going to implement it? from CBN, uh, Commodity Exchange, and the likes. They have a lot of work I mean, to do. You take words out of my mouth with the declaration of the president uh, of the state of emergency in agriculture because of food insecurity. And I'm taking this from it at this point in time. Every year we're used to hearing um, bird flu and other kinds of diseases that affect poultry, uh, so to speak. And we wonder if Nigerian farmers have been able to devise the ways, to, uh, ways, different ways to forestall this, because people think we know the times that these things come, but the, the, the stress factor on the production chain still seems to continue. Would that be the, the fault of the farmers, or are we keeping this on the government again? Okay, um, well, in terms of bird flu, 
bird flu. Um, That's not the only one. There are others uh, side that really affect. Yeah, there are there are a lot. There are a lot that uh, we have tried to, as on our own, we have tried to educate our own farmers to make sure that uh, we bring down some of these things because some of them, are, you know, they are natural airborne diseases. Okay. So there's no way you can vet some of the farms now. Though my farm, I've bought some of the materials that I'm going to use, but I've not really installed them. Okay. For you to make sure that you're always fumigating the air, you know, with chemicals that will reduce the... Whenever the, the airborne disease comes, it will be able to, to bring it down. So, but... There are little that the farmers can do. What is the mm. profit margin? We are losing. We are not even making profit. Many of us are just there just to say that, oh, because we are farmers, we have the passion for it. But you, you have associations, and that's yes. where this question comes from. Uh, what do you do in really sourcing not only for funds from within, perhaps even from without, to really bring around those things that will help you as a team? as an association. For instance, some farmers who say we don't have silos here, when we see problems or challenges, there are opportunities there. I, I, associations like yours, thinking of really uh, doing things the government wouldn't do for us and bring together, uh, bring into, into existence uh, things that will make your operations and your produce maximize your profits. Okay, um, what, what you see, um, no one individual, even the associations cannot do everything. So that is why we need to collaborate with the government. Thank God, uh, sometimes we have intervention from um, the World Bank. Okay. Uh, yeah, so um, like Lagos State, we in Lagos State, we have um, the, the, there's this appeals program that has been running for about six years. So we, we, we met with them, we met with them, and then we told them this is what we need, this egg powder machine. Okay. So by the grace of God, bef between now and maybe next month, the machine will come because all other infrastructures are already on ground, the buildings, everything are on ground. So I want to give kudos to Lagos State Government because that is going to help us. All those egg glow that we used to have will no longer be there. But there are some other angle, little hanging fruits that are there, bringing electricity to the place to make sure. Though they said they are giving us generators and the likes, but we want electricity to get to the place because we cannot be running diesel because that will still add to the cost. So we are looking at producing at the least cost because even the eggs already is already expensive. Turning it to powder is going to add extra cost. So that is what we are going, that's what we are begging Lagos State Government and their peace project to help us do. All right, uh, we, we have to go now. Uh, but in 30 seconds, what's your dream? When anybody asks you the kind of poultry uh, production uh, outlook for yourself and the country, in 30 seconds, what are your dreams and are they attainable? Are the things that are achievable given the right atmosphere? Well, my dream is that Every family should have at least, if not for the adults, the children, an egg per day. It's very important. Like my children, they take one egg, two eggs every day. They cook eggs. And their father sells eggs now. Yes, we can, because we produce eggs. But there are even some low-income earners. They cannot. Hmm. So if the government can support this industry, ours is to produce okay. for every family to have eggs and chicken in their table. It's not a luxury for Christ's sake. Hmm. Yes. Okay. All right. That's very interesting, <laughs> so to speak. At uh, this point, Liz, you do have an egg, uh, so to speak. So we've been speaking with the National Publicity Secretary, Poultry Association of Nigeria. Uh, that's uh, Mr. Gordon Egbebe, who thank you very much for your time you. and your submission. Something. I will wish you the best, the thank association. You. We also look forward to getting new, uh, a lot of innovations on how to work within the present realities moving forward. Thank you very much.